Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mount Studio. And in the previous video, we talked about how to create a reusable pop-up that you can call from any view controller in your project. And I showed you two ways on how to open up this pop-up. We did one through a segue and one through code. And I also told you that I was going to show you how to pass data from the view controller that our pop-up is in back to the view controller that opened up the pop-up. So from the pop-up back to the view controller. But I realized that <laughs> there's one thing that I was missing in that I haven't showed you how to pass data from the view controller to the pop-up. Because remember, there's one feature that we wanted in our pop-up, and that was to not only allow the user to select a date, but we also want them to be able to select a time using the same pop-up. We want to reuse this pop-up so they can select a date or a time. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video, and it's basically just centered around how to pass data from the view controller to the pop-up. Okay, so let's get started by looking at our application and where it's at right now. So I have a tab controller, and I have this button up here where I can select a date. It brings up the pop-up. I also changed this color back to red because <laughs> I changed it to a blue color before. So that changed. And then we can click this button and it dismisses it. We added a third tab right here. And we want the user to be able to click this select time button and have this title say select time and have them be able to select a time instead of a date from this picker control and have this button say save time instead of save date. So what do we need to do? Well, first what we need is on our pop-up, we need to be able to have a variable that tells us whether we're going to show date or show time. So let's add that. And I'm just going to add it right here. And I'll just call it show time picker. And it's going to be a Boolean. And by default, I'm going to set it to false. So that way, by default, it just shows the date. Okay, so I need to be able to set this value from my view controllers. Now, we did this two different ways. We have one where we're using a segue, and another one, which is our select time view controller here, where we're not using a segue, we're just opening up this pop up in code. So the first way I'm going to show you is how to pass data using a segue, which is what we see right here. So I'm going to go into this first view controller, and we're going to use this segue right here. OK, now how are we going to do this? Because the segue, we don't have an outlet for it, and we can't set code for it. So there is another way what we can do is there's an event that takes place right before we navigate using a segue and that is called prepare for segue right here notifies the view controller that a segue is about to be performed that's exactly what we want so here we have this handy little function that's going to take place right before we navigate using our segue okay now there's one thing i want you to keep in mind a storyboard or a scene on a storyboard can have many different buttons and therefore can have many different segues going to many different view controllers. So what we want to do is we only want to run this specific code when we are clicking on select date. So we need to reference this particular segue right here. Now of course this view controller only has one so we could put our code in there and it'll be fine but imagine if you have two segues and you only want to run code when you navigate to a specific view controller. So what you have to do is you have to give this segue an identifier, which is just a string. And this is basically kind of like a uh, custom cell that you have in a table view. You know, you have to give it an identifier so you can reference which cell you're talking about. It's the same thing here. We're going to give this segue an identifier so we know which one we're using. So usually what I do is I just say two, and then I usually say the view controller that it's going to. And then I add segue to the end of it. Okay, so here's our identifier. I'm going to copy this because we're going to need this in code. And you know, this is just my convention. This is this is how I do it. I, I just use the word to, and I say which view control it's going to, and I add the word segue at the end. But you can do whatever you want. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to have some code, and we only want to run this for our particular segue because. Because remember, this function will run for any segue on this view controller. 
So I want to check this segue, this, this parameter right here, and I want to check its identifier. Okay. Okay, now that I know which segue is running, now I can reference my view controller that it's going to. And a segue is very handy because the segue has properties on it that tells you where it's coming from and where it's going to. So that's what I actually what I'm going to use. So let's create a variable for our view controller that it's going to. And I access that view controller through the destination property right here. The destination view controller for the segue. So this is where it's going to. Okay, so we have the pop-up, we know the destination, but really what I want to do is I want to access that property that I just created on the pop-up, which is called show time picker. And if I try to do it right now, it's not going to find it. It doesn't know what type this uh, view controller is. So what I have to do is I have to cast it as that type, the date pop-up view controller. And now, I should see the show time picker right here. And we're going to set this to false. So then we guarantee that it's going to show the, the date. Now normally you really wouldn't have to do this, right? Because the default for this property is false and it will show the date by default. But I want to show you guys how to access the view controller that it's going to when you're using a segue. Now we want to do the same thing but for our select time view controller. But we can't do it this way because our select time view controller doesn't use a segue. Instead, what we do is we create the storyboard and we use that storyboard object to get the view controller and then we present it. So we want to set that property in here. But take a look at this again. If we try to access pop-up, notice the typer here. It says UI view controller. So when the type is UI view controller, it's not going to recognize our show time picker property that we created. See, it doesn't exist. So instead, what we have to do is we have to cast this pop up right here. We have to cast it or change its type to our view controller. And we're going to do that here. There we go. Now that it knows which type it is, let's take a look at the pop-up again. Okay, it's an error type. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, what I have to do, I didn't think I would have to uh, explicitly cast it because there's an exclamation point here, but I guess I do. Like, let's see what it's suggesting. Yeah, it wants us to add that exclamation point. Okay, now let's take a look at it. There you go. So you see the type now says date pop-up view controller. And that's because we added this as date pop-up view controller. The reason why I can do this is because like the, if we look at this function right here, it returns a type UI view controller, which is what we saw before. And now if we go into this date pop-up view controller, I'm just going to hold down command and right click on there. You notice the type is UI view controller. So when they both have a common type like this, I can cast it to say, you know, this is like a general type and I can make it more specific to this type. Because UI view controller doesn't have a title label, date picker, save button, or show time picker. But this view controller, this type of UI view controller does have these properties on it. And that's what I need to access. But if this was like a UI button, then I couldn't do that. I can only cast it if it's the same type. So this is a UI view controller that it's returning. And this is a type of UI view controller. So that's why I can cast it like this. Okay, so let's complete this. And we want the show time picker. And we're going to set that to true. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is we have to look at this variable and change the UI on our pop-up. Okay, and we're going to do that in the view did load right here. Okay, so let's start with our title label. Then we're going to change our date picker mode. 
And right now it's set to date, so we're just going to change it to time. Okay, and then we set our button to save time for its normal state. All right, good, so let's test that. Okay, for this, we set that variable to false explicitly. We didn't have to, but I just wanted to show you how it worked with a segue. So that looks right. It says uh, select a date. And then for our time, we set the variable in code after we instantiated it through the storyboard and got our view controller. And there you go. So we have the time, we have the time here, and it looks like this button needs to be expanded here. So we'll just fix that real quick. And I'm just going to stretch it all the way out here. There we go. Okay, perfect. Everything's working. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this part. You learned how to pass data from the view controller to another view controller, which is our pop-up, through two different ways. You learned that the first way was through a segue, which is the prepare for segue function. And that gets called every time you use a segue. And we just checked which segue we're using. And if we're using the one that goes to our pop-up, then we get our pop-up and we cast it as a date pop-up view controller. And once we've casted it, then we have access to our property and we can set it there. The second way was we created our pop-up from the storyboard object that we created. And again, we casted it to the date pop-up view controller so we can access the show time picker. And then we set it to true this time. And then we presented it. All right, great. So I promise in the next video, we will talk about getting data from the pop-up back to the view controller. And it's going to be a little bit different because we can't use these same methods because we went in one direction, but now we're coming back in the other direction. And the pop-up doesn't know which view controller opened it. We don't have a property on the pop-up that tells us which view controller opened it. So how we pass data back is going to be a little bit different. And I'm going to show you three different ways. All right, thanks, guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And consider sharing it with your friends if you think they'll be able to learn something from this. And if you want to help out, you can provide a translation for the title in the description in your native language. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. We have four more videos coming out in this series. Thanks, guys.